Titans and Texans. This is a divisional matchup. It is the return of a game from just a couple of weeks ago, week 15, uh, when the Titans or the Texans upset the Titans. They were a three-point road underdog. Impressive stuff. Case Keenum went on the road and, and led a drive late, and I was on the other side of that game. I had the Titans laying two and a half, and I was I was not a happy camper. Uh, and the Titans are coming off another really tough loss uh, at, at home to the Seahawks. They've really struggled over their last uh, a couple of games here. That one closed three, so some people pushed, some people won, depending on what side of the three you got. Um, I think we're going to get Will Levis. I don't know for sure. I think we're going to get C.J. Stroud. I don't know for sure. It looks probably more certain on Stroud than anything else. Um, but really, guys, the thing that stood out to me last week was how the Texans struggled to defend Amari Cooper and the Browns' offense. I don't think the Titans' offense will pose that much of a vertical threat, although Hopkins has had his moments this year. And we're all kind of in alignment. Chris, I'll start with you. It feels like the Texans at home is the move. Yeah, I think uh, we're expecting Stroud to get in there. So uh, yeah. since we have to tape this now, we're going to assume he's in. And uh, I would anticipate that that uh, amps up Houston quite a bit. Uh, yeah. They're still in this race. They're 8-7. and seven, And they have, they have to win this game. And it just feels like uh, uh, when he's at the helm that uh, – they play with a lot more confidence, and they fare better, and they're they're coached very well. They're a little healthier, I believe, than they have been, and that was a little rough game they had last week, but uh, I think they'll come back, and I think there's going to be a lot of scoring in this game. I'm going to take Houston uh, minus the four and a half points, and I also like the over in this game. I think uh, Houston's defense is having a few problems and is going to allow Tennessee to get in that end zone. Uh, a little bit more than they're they're used to. So I look for Houston in the over. Yeah, and I'm on both sides. I'm live bet. I'm adding Houston minus four and a half. So here's a case where you're getting perfect quarterback information. You're getting Stroud back for Houston. And Tannehill is better than Levis. So uh, Tennessee went all in, played super hard last week, and just barely came up short on a final drive. That's a dream crusher to end their season. And even though... Tannehill is better when betting the over. I'd rather have Levis because he's a gunslinger he's throwing yep. the ball all over the place. So we're probably going to get more, you know, um, high explosive plays and turnovers. So that helps my over 43 Houston's a dead, nut over team with Stroud. So over 43 and Houston minus four and a half live bet. Yeah. I, I think Houston's the move here. I mean, it seems like we're all kind of in agreement there. Um, I did see, I just saw it on my, uh, on my ticker here, um, on my feed that CJ Stroud has, uh, progressed to stage four of concussion protocol. I didn't know there were that many stages. I, I that's a lot of stages for concussion protocol. Um, but I, I heard his, his concussion was pretty severe sensitivity to light. Some of the yep. things that I was reading, um, it, it was, it was a two alike concussion. So, um, this will be the third week of him not playing or be off. So it'll be he had two weeks off. So um, week three is when he'll be back from this concussion, at least that it's trending in that direction. And we're all um, kind of in agreement here. Right. Texas. Like, what is this close? Fez? Like, let's flash forward to Sunday and let's say it's Levis Stroud. What is this close? I think five and a half. I think the money is going to be all over Houston in this case. And, you know, even, you know, five isn't, an important number, but they're all important. And look no further than last yeah. week they're in that Titan Seattle teams. game. If you bet that game, you won. Now we talked about how I was waiting it out and I was going to go ahead and tease uh, the Titans. If, um, if we did get um, Tannehill and that teaser ultimately did wind up winning, but you know, that line went up to three and a half. Someone has to explain to me why. So you, you could play plus three and a half early in the week. You could lay two and a half on Seattle fiddles in the middle lands yeah. three these numbers are so critical you know look no further by the way the college football bet us guys do a tremendous job definitely check out their shows and you had a first half line of virginia tech minus 6.75 today for late right before the game started well it's 10 10 and virginia tech's on the one yard line with 10 seconds left so it has a good chance to land on seven, a much better chance if Virginia Tech actually had a coaching staff that knew that they should have called timeout, you know, with the 14 seconds left instead of 10. But these numbers, if you think how good that is, if you got plus seven and a half with Tulane, you win. If you got plus yeah. seven, you push or you win. If you have plus six and a half, you're screwed. You know, you just got to get the best number on everything. And it touched down. Virginia Tech looks like it's going to land first half at seven. Where like, and I can't emphasize enough. 
when you see a result like this, and I know I'm a pain in the ass, and here comes the math, and good old grumpy, get off the line, Fezzik. It took 30 minutes to get you to the math. So I think that's a that's an upset. It took this the long. people that make a living betting sports is not the ones that are necessarily that are just telling you the right side, and this is the yeah. way to win. You know what there the right, no side, right was? side in this? You watch these You know what games? the right? There's well, no the right, right side, side, having watched the game, was clearly Tulane. Okay. <laughs> but in terms of number betting, the right bets to make yeah, were Virginia yeah. Tech minus six early in the process, earlier in the process, and Tulane plus seven and a half right at post at a rogue line fiddle in the middle. I love it. All right, let's get back to this game. Chris, um, it, you do agree five and a half is a fair closing number if it's Levis versus Stroud come Sunday? I, th- I think we'll see six on it. Six. All right. So there's your answer right there. Texans four and a half. I, I would say right now that's the consensus play of the week from from our panel. Um, still chance for that to change, though, because we've got about, oh, two-thirds of the games left. 